Good morning, friends. Greetings. And welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system, the human body is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It's designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis. No doctors, no drugs, no devices required. It does it on its own but it needs raw materials to do its work. And while this healing and renewing and regenerating system may be called a miracle by some folks, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about something you've read about, heard about, formulations, ingredients, the longevity products, skincare, skincare ingredients, we welcome your calls. Likewise, if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to our conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls in our second segment. At the bottom of the hour today, we're going to talk to Viktora Skolvinskas, who is a holistic health practitioner, nutritionist, raw food celebrity, author, co-founder of the Hippocrates Health Institute, lecturer, chef, bishop of the First Christian Essene Church of Christ, and just an all-around good guy and a super, super, super knowledgeable man when it comes to taking care of health in a holistic, raw, God-given, divine way, just like we talk about on the Bright Side every day. Victorious uh, worked with Ann Wigmore, the wheatgrass lady. She, he's just an incredible human being, and I'm very excited. We'll be talking to uh, Victorious Kulvinskas here in the bottom of the hour. So get, get on board early. We'll get your calls here in our next segment, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll talk a little bit of skin. Uh, talk a little bit about the skin today. By the way, if you're interested in purchasing any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, head over to my websites, brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or now criticalhealthnews.com, which is a blog I'm doing with George Norrie of Coast to Coast AM. That's criticalhealthnews.com, brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com. Of course, you can also uh, call the phone team at 866-735-2470 if you've got questions or if you want to sign up or purchase any products, 866-735-2470. So, okay, so uh, we'll get your calls here in our next segment. Please call, uh, please try to call in early, 844-236-6010. We're talking skincare on the bright side. We'll be doing that for a little bit. Skin as an icon or as a microcosm of the whole body. What's true about the skin is true about the body. And that's the biggest mistake we make when it comes to addressing our health, our skincare issues is not understanding or not exploiting or leveraging the health of the body. The skin is part of the body, even though it doesn't appear that way. It seems counterintuitive. We seem to think we can just rub something on the skin and create a change in the health of the tissue. Can't be done, folks. Very few skincare problems are topical problems. It hardly ever occurs. When we think of the skin as consumers, we think like Helena Rubinstein, and we think like the manufacturers of skincare products selling us wax and oil and water and perfume and pretty packaging and hope in a jar. And they're not going to encourage us to think any differently because they make a lot of money doing it. For those of you who don't know, Helena Rubinstein was a Polish immigrant who is considered the mother of the modern cosmetics industry. She came to the United States in the early 20th century when skincare meant painting for your face, mostly prostitutes. Painted faces on prostitutes, that was what skincare was when Helena Rubinstein first came to the United States in 1905 or, or somewhere in the first decade of the, of the 20th century. And, and she was an entrepreneur, and she was a, uh, women's health, a women's advocate. 
and she convinced the average woman slash housewife who at the time wasn't allowed to vote, wasn't uh, encouraged to drive or smoke smoke or back in the, at the turn of the 20th century, a woman's place was in the home and wearing makeup was, was for prostitutes and actresses. Not that they're the same, but that's who wore makeup, prostitutes and actresses. So when Helena Rubinstein came over from, from Poland, actually from Australia, from Poland via Australia, and she, she convinced women that wearing makeup was a way that the average housewife woman who couldn't vote, whose place was in the home, she convinced women that wearing makeup was a way that a woman could express herself, her feminine power, by wearing makeup. Now, there's nothing wrong with feminine power. There's nothing wrong with makeup. And there's nothing wrong with using Helena Rubinstein technology. If it's the 19th century or the 20, early 20th century, if your skin is in the 19th century, if your skin is in the early 20th century. But for us to still be using these kinds of strategies in the year 2015, when we know so much more about what the skin is and how its condition or its health or its appearance relates to the health of the entire body is a testimony to the predatory and perfidious nature, the deceitful, dishonest, and mean-spirited nature of business people and bookkeepers and bankers and marketers and celebrities in the skincare business who wouldn't know skin health from a hole in the wall and whose only interest in entering into the world of skincare, which is, at the end of the day, the world of health, skin health, is to make a quick buck. That's not fair, folks. That's just not right. I'm a capitalist. I like to make money. I got nothing wrong with money. But when you enter into the world of health and your only concern is making a buck, it's not fair. And if you're a bookkeeper or a banker and you don't care or love or know about the skin, find another business. It's not right to do that to people. And I unfortunately have personal experience with these kinds of cynical and sneaky business people who could give a rat's you know what about your skin as long as they can extract some of your money. Please, in the interest of the skin, in the interest of the organ called the skin, in the interest of the health of the skin, don't fall for it. Helena Rubinstein may have been a pioneering woman and an entrepreneur, certainly not bad things, but in 1900 she did not know, nor did anyone in her time period know anything about nutrition, nutrients, hormones, the skin, skin cell, skin layers, skin structure. Vitamins weren't even discovered until almost the second decade of the century, and a true understanding of what skin really is didn't start to develop, believe it or not, until the 1980s. Did you know that? Until the late 1970s, early 1980s, we really didn't have a grasp on how the skin worked. If your skincare products were developed before then, well, you're in the Stone Age. At least your skincare products are, and guess what? That's where most skincare products were developed. For us to still be using these kinds of primitive technologies and uh, naive technologies to address skin health, skin care, which is really health care, is just not right. If you have a bad heart or a bad liver or a bad kidney, would you trust a bookkeeper or a banker to get you healthy? Would you rub a cream or a lotion or a serum on your heart or your liver because a bookkeeper or a movie actress or a banker or a marketer who ran or represented a company or endorsed a company that made liver lotions told you you could rub this on your liver to make it healthy? Of course not. That's silly. But for some reason, we don't think of the skin as an organ. We don't think of beautiful skin, which is our right. We can all have beautiful skin. We can all have youthful, attractive skin, but we just don't think of it we don't think of the tissue called the skin or the organ called the skin or the health of the organ called the skin as a reflection of the health of the body. We're looking for the beauty, but we have it associated with health. Well, guess what? Just like a beautiful body is a reflect or beautiful body is a reflection of a healthy body, beautiful skin is a reflection of healthy skin, and we could all have it. We can all have beautiful, zit-free, wrinkle-free, psoriasis-free eczema-free, rash-free, dermatitis-free skin that's moist and youthful and soft and tight and gorgeous. But it's not a beauty issue. It's a health issue. And that message is somehow not being promoted, and that's why I'm here, to remind us that the skin is not just a canvas for adornment. It is affected, and in turn, it affects the health of the body in general. Vitamin D is made in the skin, and that affects the whole health of the body. The, sun con uh, the skin converts sun energy into biochemical energy. Our skin is actually a solar panel that turns sun energy into biochemistry. So much that the skin does. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. All right, we are 
are back on the bright side. Thank you for joining us, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com. If you missed the program, we've got four plus years, almost five years of programs at brightsideben.com. Lots of great information if you want to refer a friend or client or customer or loved one. Uh, and you can also search, by the way, at uh, you can search off brightsideben.com. You can also search for various topics at uh, benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up. And also, you can check out my blog, which we update regularly with news stories as well as blog posts, pharmacistben.com, also criticalhealthnews.com. Thank you to Robert Lundgren and John T. Collier for setting those up. And you can also, of course, order any longevity products you like off of the websites, criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, or brightsideben.com. Or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team, 866-735-2470. Okay, we're going to talk to Victoris Kulvinskas at the bottom of the hour. Victoris is a co-founder of the Hippocrates Health Institute and just an amazing, amazing health resource, author of a really cool book. If you're interested in, if you want one good health book to buy, this is the one you want, Survival in the 21st Century, Planetary Healer's Manual. Victoris is just a beautiful human being. I mean, a really beautiful human being. I'm very excited. We'll talk to him at the bottom of the hour. Uh, time to hit the phones, take your phone calls. Mary in Michigan, who's been calling in for a while here. I'm sorry, Mary. Left you on hold a couple times there, but now we got you. What's going on? How you doing? Mary, Mary, quite contrary. Where you be? Mary? Okay, looks like we got a little problem here with the phones. Let me know when we're up again, Trevor, okay? Looks like, uh, hmm. All right, well, I don't know if we're going to, it's too bad because we got to, yeah, time to hit Mary. Mary, you there? Mary? Mary, Mary. Okay, let me see if I get somebody else here. Not a problem with the phones? Mary? Okay, might be a problem with Mary. Okay, we're going to put Mary back on hold and go to Angela. What's up, Angela? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hi, Carl, Mrs. Ben. We spoke yesterday about oily skin and adrenal acne. I just wanted to call and finish that up. Okay. What's cooking? How can we help you? Did I, did I leave so you hanging on I, something? No, I just wanted to see um, regarding the stressors that could be affecting oily okay. skin. Okay. Sugar. And Sugar is the most important. Yes, I remember talking to you yesterday. We talked on the air. Uh, here's the thing. Oily skin needs to be regarded as a sign of stress. This is one of the generic ways the body responds to emergencies. When you think about it, the body has all these generic ways of responding to an emergency, whether that emergency is a credit card bill, or it's sugar, or it's digestive distress, or an autoimmune disease, or it's your husband or wife or family, or whether it's cancer, or whether it's a real lion about to jump on you and eat you. All of these are manifest or are, are ways or uh, causes of stress. Stress, and the body's responses are always generic. The blood will clot for one thing. The heart will beat harder for another thing. The blood, vessel, uh, the blood vessels will constrict in some places and open in other places. You'll end up with hypertension. Your digestive system will shut down. All, uh, your immune system will become suppressed. These are all generic responses to stresses, whether the stress is a Snickers bar or the stress is your boss or the stress is the New World Order or the stress is your dysfunctional family or the stress is a lion about to jump and pounce on you and eat you. The body will respond to all of these stresses in the same generic ways. These generic ways are, are called the GAS, the, uh, the generalized adaptation, or the GAR, the generalized adaptation response, or the generalized adaptation syndrome. It was, uh, the, all of these things are ways that the body responds to stress, and oily skin is one of these ways. So when you have oily skin, you got something that's burdening the body. It's usually not a lion, because there aren't any lions running around our cities and towns. Got any lions running around there in Florida? Probably not. But you probably do have sugar in your blood, or maybe you have an autoimmune problem, or a nutritional deficiency, or a hormone problem, or a psychological, emotional, or mental kind of stress. You follow me, Angela? Yes. I'm also okay. wondering, does it... Well, hang on, sweetheart. Have... Hang on. Hang oh. on, hang on, hang on. So what you want to do when you have oily skin is you want to regard it as something that's burdening the body. Now, you got to get rid of all the stressors, of course. Sugar is the biggest one. And sugar will make your skin oily pretty darn quickly. But there's also nutritional supplements that you can use, chief among which is vitamin B5, pantothenic acid, taken with the whole B complex, as we said yesterday. Zinc can also help you with dry skin or with oily skin. And you can also use the zinc topic 
quickly. Topical zinc oxide can suck up or mop up excess oil. So uh, you can make your own zinc oxide powder, even just sprinkling zinc oxide powder right on top of the skin, or even mineral makeup, not to be used as makeup, but just as a way to sop up that excess oil. Also, uh, bentonite clay can work as well. Um, those are topical ways to do it. But getting rid of the stress is the most important thing. I'm sorry, Angela. Go ahead. Oh, no. I was just wondering, if you have adrenal acne, do you also have adrenal fatigue? Yeah. Uh, adrenal fatigue follows long-term adrenal stress, and adrenal acne is a sign of adrenal stress. So, yes, adrenal fatigue can follow uh, adrenal acne. Absolutely. Adrenal acne is caused by burden, uh, adrenal glands that are working too hard, and then adrenal fatigue follows that. Okay. Okay, Thank I'm going to be blogging about adrenal fatigue here. I'm going to put a blog post on adrenal fatigue on, on, on uh, pharmacistben.com in the next few days. So you might want to take a look at that. Great. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Angela. Hope we helped you. Vitamin B5 and zinc are your two go-to supplements for skin oils, and of course, uh, getting rid of uh, getting rid of any uh, any stressors, especially sugar, big time toxin, big time stressor. Okay, we got Mary in Michigan. What's up, Mary? How you doing? Uh, hi, hi, pharmacist Ben. Um, uh, well, I, <laughs> I don't know. I keep trying to talk to you, and I'm having a tough time. Okay. Um, uh, I, I'm trying desperately to to heal and heal my gut and improve my my uh, my good um, probiotics in there. Well, it's easy, my Mary. It's far. easy, Mary. If you're not if it's not getting done, we're we're not we're missing something. Well, now, I know. By the way, I, I went on a fast. I've talked to you before. I went on a fast, and I was on it. I, I, and I guess I was on it for about five six days. And I was supposed to call you back on Monday, and that whole week you had. You had pre-programming, and so. Oh, oh I'm <laughs> but sorry. Anyway, so, and and I've tried to get back to you since, and. Um, well, I'm going to have to. You know, we only have a couple more minutes because we had a guest. So, so I'm going to I'm going to answer your question here, real. You know, about leaky gut. It's very easy and very important. And by the way, our next guest or our guest at the bottom of the hour, Victorious uh, Kovinskis, is going to talk about leaky gut and about digestive health. So listen in for the next hour because he's an expert, a, a true genius about the Can digestive system. Can I ask system. you a question about her topic? Right sure. off the bat, yeah. Uh, I I re was reading in a book where, or I heard somebody where where wheatgrass, uh, the 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 chlorophyll in the in the wheatgrass juice um, uh, oxygenates your blood. Uh, it helps oxygenate the blood, absolutely. Plus, okay. it's a source of magnesium. It's detoxifying. Wheatgrass is amazing stuff. We'll talk to Victorious about it at okay. the bottom of the hour. But here's the thing, Mary, that concerns me. Leaky gut is very easy to address. And digestive health is very easy to address. The digestive system ta uh, is the system that transfers or, or, or converts food into human beings, right. food into biochemistry, food into us, and then throws the rest out as waste. And that's all it does, really. It converts food into human processes or right. human structure and then dumps the rest out so if you have a gut problem if you have a digestive problem you have a food problem right that means when you stop eating food number one you're gonna feel better right and then number two you're gonna give your body or your digestive system a chance to recover now you do need to have some supplements and some some su uh, substances that will help repair the gut uh, probiotics are extremely important fermented food is extremely important fiber which acts to feed probiotics or feed good bacteria is also tremendously important. So between fasting, probiotics, uh, fiber, vegetables, and also perhaps things like the Z-radical algae, polysaccharides, these complex sugars, healing the gut is really something that nature has designed for us because the gut is made to heal. All right, Mayor, we got to go. If you can call back tomorrow, we'll get you first stuff. we got a uh, Victorious Kovinskis coming, uh, coming up at the bottom of the hour. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. All right, welcome back to The Bright Side, friends. Pharmacist Ben here. Thanks for joining us. I am so excited to talk to our guest, Victoris Kulvinskas, author of Survival in the 21st Century. Victoris is a uh, holistic health practitioner, nutritionist, expert in raw foods and the digestive system, co-founder of the Hippocrates Health Institute. Uh, and just a truly amazing, amazing human being, as well as a, an amazing resource, spiritual and beautiful, uh, just a wonderful man. I'm, I can't tell you how excited I am to talk to Victoris. Victoris works with Ann Wigmore, one of the uh, one of the earlier early proponents of wheatgrass, and we'll get to talk about that a little bit. Uh, I guess I'll let Victoris tell his story. Uh, also, Victoris is an expert in enzymes, and I, I can't wait to talk to him about enzyme therapy as well. So please welcome to the Bright Side, Victoris Kulvinskas. Greetings, Victoris. 
Greetings, Ben. It's such a pleasure to to be initiated into your audience and family. And I look forward to a long-term relationship. Um, I as well. Thank you so much, Victoria. So, you know, your your reputation precedes you. You've got so many accolades, and, and there's your bio is so dense and packed with stuff. But I want to get I want listeners to understand how a regular guy like yourself, who uh, you know, European, just born in a born uh, as a regular person, all of a sudden, be, how did you develop this expertise? How did you go from being a regular person to, uh, to a director of research and a proponent and an advocate of raw foods and, and tr a truly a, uh, a uh, human health expert. What was the, what was the, uh, uh, tell us a little bit about how this evolution occurred. Well, uh, greatest motivation for anybody is uh, when you're dying and no one could help you. The only person that you can rely and trust, you reach out for your own resources, and that's exactly what I did. I was basically experiencing old age by the time I was in my late 20s, uh, losing my hair. My face was covered with acne. I had advanced arthritis, compromised cardiovascular, 25 years of migraine. Yet in spite of many of, and many other complications, but in spite of all these things, I was a super achiever. You know, I just worked uh, a little harder and a little smarter. Harder, but I didn't know anything about nutrition and how to take care of yourself. This is an example of what is happening to 90% of Americans. They are lost souls. They are just, you know, grasping for some information, and it's becoming a major, major explosion of people in search for truth. And I was a truth seeker, and I, I started off with I could find in the media. Then from there, I ended up in the medical library. So I spent close to six years at Harvard Medical Library spending usually between minimal three hours up to eight hours a day. And that was an ongoing relationship, research, research, research. And now you can do all this Google your way into knowledge and wisdom. All you have to do is make proper choices in the way you manage uh, your, the information. So I had a good sense of what it was all about. I was raised on a farm and had a naturalistic-oriented uh, uh, grandmother. So she gave me some sense of, you know, what is right and wrong and the there's the common sense, you know. I mean, drinking, uh, you know, 15 cups of coffee is not good common sense, and I was doing things like that, and and just overall abusive, yet uh, I was very strong constitutional, so I held up under the duress until I found a life raft and ended up trying to or organize the information into something that is sensible, and uh, as I organized, it turned into a 320 page manual and uh, and uh, of course I made it quite cute with a lot of illustrations people like pictures and uh, I hit the road like any rock star will hit the road if you want to be a success you got to go out to the people so I spent about three years uh, basically on the road promoting myself at anybody that would accept me and uh, continue to be of course uh, very energetically involved with Hippocrates Health Institute that I co-founded with Ann Wigmore. So that, that was more or less the situation, you know, going from college math instructor, then eventually I, became, I got a little bored with that, and uh, I wanted something more exciting, and computers were just in a age of pioneering, so I joined one of the, actually the top firm, and initially worked at Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory, and then from there to Phi, which was the top company, ended up doing a stock exchange at 200 to 1. So it was an uh, ex exceptionally exciting adventure, but I, I always followed my passion. I, you know, I didn't uh, trust uh, other experts, that's what I would say, you got to show me the proof. And nobody mm -hmm. has anything to document themselves in the medical community, so I had to find the answers myself. And of course, we, we, we were creating miracles at Hippocrates. Uh, I mean, I saw diabetics becoming well in a matter of two to three weeks, including type 1 diabetic who was 25 years on insulin and went from uh, 125 units to zero in a matter of three weeks and was continued to do well as long as she managed her stress well. But it was the diet was everything. Now there's a one-to-one -one correlation uh, 
uh, between consumption of pasteurized dairy products by mother and or infant. Uh, and uh, in terms of uh, diabetic uh, predisposition, I saw cancer conditions, you know, because we created the nutritional environment, start becoming either regressed or totally well, uh, depending on how much effort the individual applied themselves into nutritional detoxification and now we have something even better it's called holistic model and that means addressing your spiritual your emotional your mental needs as well as dietary exercise and uh, of course and as well as also what your life is all about uh, what it's meant to so we're very holistically oriented, and live food is the best fuel. It's the least affected uh, in, t in terms of from nature to your tummy. And the most nutritionally dense food are the sprouts. Sprouts, wheatgrass, uh, indoor baby greens. Uh, the reason is they're at the immature high rate of growth, and they have the highest density concentration of enzymes. Enzymes, and then, of course, the next thing is best for you is Basically, kimchi, sauerkraut, that is the ones that are unpasteurized because of the microbial cultures. And just remember, you're about uh, 100 to 1 in a healthy individual. Uh, for every cell you have, you have over 100 probiotic uh, uh, microbes inside of your gastrointestinal tract, as well as on your skin, mouth, eyes, hair, everywhere else. They're very important, but we'll talk about that. So more or less, you know. Personally motivated uh, by trying to rescue myself from death and old age, and right now I'm in my late 70s. And wow. you know, I did I did on uh, uh, Valentine's Day 400 push-ups. You know, that's in fifty, of course, well, not as one as a one rep, but it's still pretty darn good. Are you still doing yoga? Absolutely, for 35 years, and uh, continue to get more flexible. Uh, that's that's so awesome. It's, uh, it's a very important in terms of adjust spinal adjustment, uh, detoxifying the internal organs, uh, lining up your, you might say, chakras or glandular systems. So you have optimum flow of energy throughout your body. And, and then the breathing exercises, pranayama, is of the highest importance because, you know, oxygen ha has gone from, uh, you know, a thousand years ago, it was uh, in 40% uh, in the air. Now it's close between 10 and 15, uh, according to uh, environmental journals in the city. So we don't get enough oxygen. Also, most people are anemic, uh, so they're not. They don't have enough red blood cells and hemoglobin to transport oxygen. So, Victor, anyway. we got to take a we got to take a quick break. We'll continue. We come back. Okay, hang tight. Okay. Hold on to that thought. I'm pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Victoris Kovinskas about raw food and good health. We'll be back on the Bright Side right after this. Don't go away. All right, welcome back to the Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here. Thank you for joining us. We're talking to Victoris Skolvinskis, author of the book Survival in the 21st Century, as well as a uh, co-founder of the Hippocrates Health Institute. Hippocrates Health Institute, Victoris, has been a health advocate for many years. Oh my God, Victoria, you hit so many hot buttons when you were talking before. Uh, breathing and uh, sprouts and raw foods and spiritual, mental, emotional, physical. I mean, these are all things we talk about here on the Bright Side. Before, I want to ask you a couple of things, but before we get to that, give out your website real quick, Victorious, and uh, how can people get the book if they're interested in survival in the 21st century? I think the easiest would be just go to Amazon.com. Okay, that's for the book. And then how about if they want to, uh, do you have a website if they want to find out more about you and more about your work? Then definitely I would suggest going to Youthing, Y-O-U-T-H-I-N-G.com. Okay. Youthing.com. Okay, so we have a lot of listeners, Victoria, who are suffering with de degenerative diseases, dying, uh, accelerated aging, dying, uh, uh, confronting death, pain, all kinds of misery. And we, uh, I talk to them every day. I, you do as well. What do you want folks to know as far as the top few things that they can do if they're dealing with a, a degenerative crisis or they've been told they're going to be on a prescription drug for the rest of their life or they're just not getting better? What are two or three, uh, one, two, three, four top things that they can do to begin to turn things around to access their bodies built in? natural healing capabilities? Well, first of all, I would turn to whatever faith they have. 
and uh, basically develop much more trust that there is a solution, there is a natural solution. The first place is faith and trust that there is an answer. Secondly, increase your hydration. Third, start eating only organic foods. Uh, fourth, go toward uh, become as much as possible vegan diet. Uh, then next, I would suggest greens, emphasize greens, and above all, the best supplement to take because the number one cause of all degenerative diseases, and this is in my book, Life in the 21st, excuse me, in my book, Food Enzymes for Health and Longevity, it is documented from all the resources is digestive disorders. Digestive disorders are related to enzyme exhaustion. So if you can start taking quality enzymes, you're going to make a big, big difference in your overall health. And then, of course, go out for a walk, a little bit of exercise. All these things are key, you know, as well as whatever else you might add. Is there anything in terms of degenerative diseases that is not reversible, in your opinion? Uh, yes, there is. Uh, uh, Dr. John Christopher, a naturopath doctor, says there's no incurable diseases, only incurable personality. So there you go. Some so people just don't want to stay around. They don't want to make that effort. And as a result, they are would be considered, uh, you know, uh, by natural approaches. And there's no cure in nature. A natural approach is basically you create an environment. The body is self-healing. It rejuvenates itself. It grows your hair back. You cut, a, you cut your finger. It quickly heals. Scars dissolve, disappear. Body is self-healing. It, it doesn't matter whether it's degenerative disease or acute condition or a crisis. What do you think about immortality, physical immortality? Uh, well, it's actually a very good topic. I am, uh, I'm actually of the same order, and our book, the Book of Jubilee that I quote in my book, Survival, it's one of the uh, sacred books in the Dead Sea Scrolls that were discovered in 1947, uh, and, and basically it states that a time will come when the children will once again not only study the laws but follow the commandments. And as such, there will be no more aging, no more sadness, and no more disease. And, and, and also all shall live in youthful bodies for thousands of years and, uh, and experiencing their dharma, or in other words, their passion, why they're here on planet Earth. We all have a destiny and we have a reason. Get connected with that. Otherwise, you're just doing another incarnation. So what, tell our listeners a little bit about what the Essenes are and how that relates to nutrition. Because I know uh, they talked a lot about fasting and about using healthy foods, whole foods. And they, had, they weren't just about the spiritual dimension. They were a lot about the physical dimension as well, correct? Absolutely. They were very holistic. One of the early holistic, uh, which uh, they kind of uh, made us, uh, the, many of the Hindu texts also, like Bhava Gita, proceeded with this whole concept of holism. But the Essenes uh, emphasized uh, basically, uh, as far as nutrition, they developed organic gardening in a place where nothing grew in a desert. And, uh, you, and primarily, uh, they did it through utilizing nature's laws of condensation and microbial activity. And they grew mostly baby, baby sprouts, baby greens. These are, they call them biogenic foods, which means from extremely high energy, they're beyond raw foods. And uh, these are the kind of foods that they lived about about 85% of the diet. The other might have had some fruit, might have had some more mature vegetables and stuff like that. So their emphasis was on very high intensity living uh, type of foods. And uh, they uh, were noted uh, uh, scholars, uh, as you can see by the scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls were all written by the Essenes. And uh, it became incorporated into, por portions of it became incorporated into the Bible at the Council of Nicaea uh, that Constantinople organized, uh, you know, in the 13th uh, century. And uh, basically, uh, they also were noted great healers. But one of the outstanding features that would be of interest to everybody, uh, historian Josephus noted that the longevity of the 
the Essenes was 400% longer than the rest of the Mediterranean huh. area. We're talking about southern Africa, uh, uh, north, uh, excuse me, southern, U- southern part of uh, Europe, northern Africa, and uh, the rest of the Mediterranean area. So they, they were very healthy, very vital, and uh, most of the people who came into a scene community, they were quite sickly, and then they loved uh, the way of life. Uh, they ended up taking on residency, but they had many people who also lived in the cities. So we adopted uh, many of those practices, and the Hippocrates Health Institute nutritional program is very much like the scene uh, nutritional program. Not only that, but uh, you find in the Dead Sea Scrolls, wheatgrass was already mentioned that was uh, found in the uh, catacombs of uh, the scrolls that are found in the, the, uh, the Vatican Library, and uh, Professor Edmond Zakeli, who was uh, uh, basically the, the modern uh, 21st century uh, Essene uh, re, re, invigorator, and uh, he's the, he spoke five ancient languages, and he spoke Aramic, and one of the many scrolls that he found was, it's now called the Essene Gospel of Peace, Volume 4, and uh, basically all about wheatgrass and all the powers it had within it, and we're all discovering it. I mean, you drink that wheatgrass, it sends like lightning through your yeah, body it's true. of energy and vitality. and. Victorious, I, I want. We only have about a minute, but I want you to talk a little bit about wheatgrass, and we only have a minute, so just hit the high points, and we're definitely going to have you back on, uh, and we'll talk about a lot of other things. I want to talk about enzymes, I want to talk about algae, I want to talk about fasting, but we only have about a minute. Give us some of the high, highlights about wheatgrass, why it's so important. Well, first of all, it's a food that you can grow at home. Every vegetable you buy uh, in, the, in the grocery stores, unless you buy locally, but even there, it's probably uh, a day or two old. Uh, the other stuff will be three to five, uh, could be three to five weeks old. Uh, so you're getting the freshest food that is still growing when you're going to be juicing that wheatgrass. And combination of sprouts and wheatgrass, uh, sprouted wheat and, and wheatgrass, gives you the most powerful combination for rejuvenation. Uh, both uh, your chakras, especially libido, and also you thing. You can use it topically. You can apply it on any kind of healing, like I crush my thumb uh, with a 40 put a 40 uh, pound uh, guillotine. I put it in wheatgrass juice. Within six, 30 minutes, the pain was all gone, and the next day, its pain reappeared. I put it in the wheatgrass juice again, and the pain was all gone, never to come back. My, my thumb was crushed, and I mean it, by a 40-pound weight coming, uh, coming down like a guillotine from four feet down. It was a, one of these old windows at a mansion. So, you, it's just you put your one finger right in the wheatgrass juice. Hang on, Victor, food. Victor. Victor, hang on. You put your finger right in the wheatgrass juice? Yeah, wheatgrass juice. Yeah, immediately. I, 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 and that was when the days I didn't know too much about this nutritional program. Instinctively, that's what I did. When my wow. th- finger was crushed, I was screaming and ran all the way to the second floor of the mansion that uh, where the Hippocrates Health Institute was located at one time in Boston. And I juiced, put my finger in there, and within 30 minutes, the pain was gone. And I wow. said, oh, good, great. It will never come back. No, next day came back with vengeance. I repeat it one more time and that was it you know and uh you know Victor, just- we're, we're out of time my friend I, but that's an amazing story I, I never thought about using wheatgrass topically but it makes perfect sense with well, all the you enzymes can drink it through your skin uh, you just cover your body and and it'll be absorbed and if you rub yourself down with a wet cloth a white cloth it will have no green on it because everything has been absorbed through your skin that's it's the tremendous. largest not only eliminative but digestive organ Victorious, we're just flat out of time, but we're definitely going to have you back. We're going to talk about enzymes. We'll talk about fasting, continue talking about wheatgrass. That's Victorious Kulvinska, thank you so much. Truly a celebrity in the world of holistic health. His book is Survival in the 21st Century. His website, youthing.com. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Talk to you later, folks.